Catch Amazing Minds Mondays, Wednesdays and Fridays, 20 hours Central African time on YouTube, Google, Apple and Spotify for podcasters. Zambia's first late night show. show monday show monday show you're welcome uh have you heard that advert mm. at uh, <laughs> what welcome 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 what what eh? <laughs> 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 it's not an advert actually it's teacher mpamiri uh, the comedian from uganda yeah uh, welcome 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 what what eh? welcome. my I'm name not, is teacher mpamiri mpamiri what eh? <laughs> oh, i've not really followed that one <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. yeah, you guys are welcome to Monday show. Uh, Today is Monday political segment of the show. If you're not subscribed, please do subscribe. Hit that bell and share. Amazing Minds, Zambia's first late night show. I hope you guys are loving the show so far. I kind of feel like I'm skewered towards this side. <laughs> <laughs> can you guys see me clearly? Am I straight? I think this is why we need to start going live so they can tell us, oh, no, you are actually <laughs> in the middle of the shot. Or anyway, I can see myself from the, <laughs> from the screen there, though that screen is never accurate. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> yeah, I'm here with Mr. Cho Fire, as in Cho Fire, Cho Umulilo. <laughs> Cho Fire, how are you doing, sir? I'm a blessed guy. <laughs> I'm a blessed guy. Yeah, I How can, are you doing? I can see. And if you're not affect, if you're not infected, you're affected. If you can't beat them, join yeah, them. If you're African, okay. Yeah, unfortunately, <laughs> them, maybe that was a bad example. <laughs> how are you doing? I'm okay. Okay. <laughs> I'm fine. Yeah. That's how you answer, right? Yeah. Yeah, I'm fine. Yeah. Uh, I just got a news. I just got news yesterday that uh, uh, one of my friends is gone. Where's he Someone gone? I knew for a very long time. Where's he going to? He's <laughs> <laughs> going to meet with the Lord. No, oh, sorry. Just move the mic towards you. Yeah, see, these guys don't tell us to <laughs> do all this stuff before. Can you guys help him? Yeah, okay. It's, it's good? Okay. It's can, good? Yeah, I think I can hear you well. Okay. Can you hear us well? Okay. Yes, uh huh. Mm. Your friend has gone where? <laughs> Why do you have to make a joke out of it? <laughs> ah, my, Mr. Chofa is not my, happy with this. My jokes. friend breathed, breathed, come on, do you know, breathe this last. Yesterday. Do you know why you guys take so much offense with death jokes? Mm. Maybe it's how we differently perceive death. I don't see death as a demotion, I see it as a promotion. Yeah, well, so well you, depending you, on how someone lived well. anyway. You, oh, you see, so you said it. Yeah. Depending on someone, the way someone lived, and uh, perception, it, it could be a demotion or something. And also now, when it comes to the perception, it depends on how other people look at death. Yeah. yeah. Do you do you dream? Are you a dreamer when you go to bed? Mostly, yeah. Mostly. Yeah, of course. They say you dream always, right? They say, yeah. They say you always dream, but mm. are you one to remember your dreams? Yeah. Let me say 50-50. 50-50? Yeah. Why? Of course, that's a very vague, uh, that's a very vague uh, 
assumption. Yeah. So yeah. sometimes it's a black dream. You just wake up from this. Of course. Black wall that you were staring at. Mm-hmm. I wasn't staring. I didn't know anything. <laughs> <laughs> you were staring at a wall you didn't even realize you were staring at. Yeah. I kind of feel that that's uh, what goes on uh, with people who die. They're yeah. Unconscious. Yeah. Yeah. Like you're sleeping. <laughs> they know nothing. <laughs> they know nothing. Yeah. It's not true that they know nothing. I know the scripture you're talking about. You have to finish it. Mm, what what does it say? They know nothing about. Uh, but I didn't say uh, I'm quoting from a scripture or something. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so they, what, they know nothing about uh, the living. Yeah. What makes you they they not necessarily know nothing about the living, but mm. they have no connection with the living. They have no means of interacting with the living. Okay. I, I wish I had that scripture up here, but it's not Bible talk, so yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, Naboera Futu, Ngati Mufuno Mvira Vindua, so catch Bible talks every Friday, 20 hours. Futi? Right here on YouTube and <laughs> podcasts available Mondays, Wednesdays, Fridays. Yeah. Google Zam- Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Apple Spotify. Apple Piankar, since it doesn't want to move for Friday show. <laughs> I know. Oh, by the way, we are... Uh, anyway, I don't know whether we should tell you this, but we, we've, we've actually I've already begun, given them a hint. Uh, yeah, you've <laughs> given them. This, this studio is really meant for what we're doing now. Monday show kind of arrangement, late night show. Bible Talks is a bit of a... We are forcing it into late night, but, <laughs> oh. <laughs> but that's a show on its own. So we're going to we're going to see what we can do this year by the time this year is ending mm. i think we would have unveiled what the show really is yeah yeah there's been a lot of work in the background there's been a lot of work here yeah. Yeah. yeah so uh de- i asked about dreaming when mm. when you go to bed you dream mm. you notice that you are alive i think we talked about this mm. last week did we mm. not on the show not on the show mm. though right yeah mm. um yeah, I guess that's how it is. So just depending on how you lived your life, mm-hmm. you you realize you you have woken up. When you die, mm. you realize <laughs> you you've woken up and you re- ah, wait. Mm. It feels like I've been here all along. Mm, you become all knowing. <laughs> I won't say all knowing, but mm. then you realize. Mm. <laughs> or that you're dead. You real that you have now you are now alive. The thing mm-hmm. is that our life here is not mm-hmm. really. So you realize that now you are alive, but in that realizing that now you are alive, since you are realizing a lot of things, mm-hmm. you realize that eh, uh, the world now is looking at you like a dead person. Okay. Yeah. So okay, let me let me explain it this way. Mm-hmm. If if we're in this room mm-hmm. now, mm-hmm. and then you leave this room. Mm-hmm. Uh, we who remain in this room do not know what you're doing outside, mm-hmm. but you know what we're doing inside, and you know what depends, and you know what is going. No, because you left us shooting. Oh yeah, okay. So if you I know, left you shooting, yeah. Yes. You, well, they are shooting mm-hmm. in the studio, so you could be in the kitchen, maybe or mm-hmm. making yourself a, a burrito <laughs> or something. Uh, we don't know what you're doing outside of the room. But you know what we're doing inside of the room. As a matter of fact, you could be watching us from the screen mm-hmm. outside. Okay. And you know what we're doing, but we don't know what you're doing. Okay. And you have no way of telling us okay. what we are to expect when we go outside. Mm, that's a bit frightening. It's a bit frightening. To some people, it could be. <laughs> okay. I'll, I'll say something that would be a bit controversial, but I'll one day address it on, on Bible Talks. Mm, this is uh, the reason why they should subscribe and uh, be watching Bible Talks every Friday. Yes. Mm. Um... We were, we, when we came to earth, mm. this is not when Shofia began to exist for the first time or Dan began to exist for the first time. Mm-hmm. You know, God says to Jeremiah, before you were born, I knew you. Mm-hmm. So these are individuals who knew each other before they had an agreement that one should go to the earth. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. Anyway, so uh, Mondays are political discussions. Yeah. Wednesdays. Case, uh... But Friday, maybe we're going to extracurricular activities. You can watch it even on a Saturday. Yeah. But it airs on a Friday. Yeah. 20 hours. Yeah. So, I'm going to watch Saturday. I'm going to watch Saturday. I'm going to watch something. Just watch uh, <laughs> Amazing Minds Bible Talks. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's worth it, I should say. I'm not saying this because I'm part of this show, but Aww. it's worth it. I, I, watch, so I watch, I watch, I watch uh, Bible Talks too. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I'm, I I'm glad, to say I'm glad you, but I'll keep it. I'm glad you like it. 
Thank I you. I said I watch. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, today is uh, first April. Huh? Yeah, I would. I would take that. That was a full day joke. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. By the way, big happy birthday to two of my friends, Bruce and Ike Sakara. Uh, yeah. yeah, and Makumananazo, uh, guys. I can never forget Luendo Mwale on that list. Yeah. All right. Uh, what are we looking at today? We have uh, a couple of stuff we're looking at today. By the way, did I tell you guys to subscribe? I hope I did. Leave your comments in the comment section. Tell us what you think about the show and what you would like to see on the show. Uh, today we're discussing the Lord shedding that might last up to the end of the year. This was the revelation given to us uh, by the man at the top himself, top of Zesco, obviously. Uh, after which <laughs> we'll discuss the cost of living, yeah. uh, continuing with his trajectory. Uh, you seem happy when saying that. Upward trajectory. <laughs> Shouldn't we be happy about all increments generally? <laughs> no, not this increment. <laughs> yeah, it was sarcasm. <laughs> <laughs> then after that, we'll discuss Zambia securing the debt restructuring deal. Um, and lastly, we're going to discuss, much to Mr. Chofaya's delight, Hero Stadium uh, <laughs> Cholera Center closed. Yeah, who doesn't want <laughs> cholera to go away? I know. He's so happy that cholera has come to an end. I'm happy to. It doesn't come to an end. But just, just not as... A, Oh, <laughs> yeah, oh, of course, this phase, ah, th this yeah. deadly phase has exactly. probably come to its, uh, its latter stages. This season yeah. has come to its finale. Mm. Uh, yeah. We are waiting for season. How many cholera outbreaks have we had so far? Yeah, probably we're waiting for like a season 35 or something. <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking. That was just a number. Random yeah, number. we are waiting for the next season, but uh, we hear the next season premieres December. Mm -mm -mm, please. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The next season probably won't come as soon as people think. You think so? Because of the vaccine. Because of the vaccine. Yeah. I mm. told you. So we'll probably wait for like two or three years. Do you remember how fast COVID came back after the vaccine? <laughs> No, but if COVID I, is something guess, else, the guess vaccine not of COVID to, is something else. I guess we're not supposed to talk about this on the show. Why? Uh, YouTube doesn't take kindly to this. And we're not in the United States, so they will gladly close us. Yeah. <laughs> so. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. Yeah. I wish I could say more, but I respect that. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, those are the subjects Speak where this. Speak of free speech. I know. This yeah. is a global fight. Uh, mm -hmm. we'll, do, we'll give you guys our first uh, free speech movie on our next show. <laughs> yeah, it will be a series. Our our season one comes this <laughs> comes this this coming Monday. We're and going to be giving you. Spoiler alert! It is yeah. Zambian. Yes, it is a fully Zambian movie. Yeah. Yeah. Let's get into it. I always forget when I say let's get into it, and then I have to reorganize myself. <laughs> um, yeah. Just talk to the people. Talk to the people. Encourage them. Tell them to pray. I can talk to you. Organize yourself. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, yeah, they they should know that we are just coming from Easter. Where, oh wow! Yeah, oh. I read somewhere mm. someone was saying we shouldn't be calling it Easter. This person happens to be uh, your friend, but let's not go there. I have much to say, with very little ears to hear it. Yeah. About Easter. About the so-called friend. Yeah, so. <laughs> <laughs> this is bad. <laughs> Some friendships are overrated. Yeah, so. <laughs> yeah. We needed this in the hip hop music industry in Zambia. People are quiet. I know, we I know. Encourages people like this. Z. Hmm. Maybe we should get into rap and bring some. Not just because it's Labdim Muyop. Aye. Hmm. <laughs> Slap if, you dig it. It, if you don't get it, forget about it. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I actually didn't get it. <laughs> 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 All right, so we have some news from the managing director of Zesco, uh, who is giving us what would seemingly be bad news, uh, even though he gave it so casually. <laughs> so casually, we are not even going to show you the video of him saying it. Uh, yeah, but Zesco managing director Victor Mapani says that the effects of the current load shedding crisis may be, pro may be prolonged until the end of the year. Mr. Mapani, however, said Zesco is looking at ways to address the challenges 
with solar being one of the early solutions. He said that solar being the shortest alternative will take little time frame to set up, while others such as hydro alternatives being set up in various parts of the country may take up more time. Speaking on Diamond Television last night, uh, well, this was a couple of days ago, Mr. Mapani said the current load shedding, uh, current load shedding will not end in October. Costa, first I should correct that. <laughs> I never talked about load shedding ending in October. The load shedding will not end in October because where will the water come from? We look at the whole year up to December. He said, before I go further, do you remember that just last week I was talking about this? I was asking the same questions. Was it last week or the other week? I was asking the same it's questions. The other week. Yeah, talking about how mm. uh, it hasn't been explicitly given mm. to us, at least now, mm. even though it wasn't them telling us directly. Mm -hmm. We had to hear it through Costa. <laughs> but uh, but it was the, the, the Zesco managing direct. Yeah, who couldn't make a speech himself. So uh, <laughs> No, he was talking to the public, right? It's a public program. After being invited. Yeah, so. <laughs> <laughs> After accepting the invitation. Which he couldn't do on his own page. So yeah. He <laughs> <laughs> That's why we have such programs. Yeah, to have them explain further what they said on their page. Yeah, what's wrong with that? That's why we have them. Which he didn't say. <laughs> Yeah. So <laughs> he finally gave us uh, yeah. the details. You have we something so... against Jesco these days. Eh? No, not... the whole country has. No, actually the whole country does. Yeah. I, I would be shocked. It's understandable. I would be extremely shocked to find an individual who has no problem with Jesco <laughs> right now. <laughs> okay. Even foreigners should have an issue with Jesco <laughs> because they should be saying, oh guys, why can't you do it the way we do it here? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, anyway. Moving on. He said the current water levels will be rationalized up to December, but noted that this year's rain pattern will be favorable. The levels would rise faster, thereby cutting down on load shedding. Did I? I didn't even get that. Anyway, when asked if the number of hours in load shedding will be reduced, Mr. Pap Mr. Mapani said hours may not necessarily reduce. Further, when asked about being selective in how power management was being rationed in terms of load shedding, Mr. Mapani clarified that it is not selective, but exemption method being used. He noted that some places were being exempted due to having uh, lifeline areas such as hospitals, which could not afford to be put off the grid. Anyway, we watched this interview mm -hmm. uh, and we heard what, we had to, what he had to say. He also talked about how uh, they have been considering splitting the hours, except uh, they are still trying to study the regions because some regions might have industries that might be affected by splitting hours because they would have to send their workers home half day if they only uh, if they if they took powers mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. you, I, I I think you you, yeah. you must have yeah, heard but him talk you know about the that. way it sounded most likely they won't consider that yeah mm -hmm. so from the way he sounded he was talking about distinguishing between industrial areas and residential areas mm -hmm. uh, then he also talked about. Uh, he gave a breakdown further of the deficits mm -hmm. and how much, uh, I think he did. Did it make sense to you now? He, yeah, it did. Uh, he gave some clarity. Mm -hmm. Also, he had a very big smile on his face. So, <laughs> <laughs> okay. yeah, but it did bring some clarity to why we actually do need the lot shedding, mm -hmm. except it doesn't still explain why we haven't had an alternative up to now. Because if we are talking about alternatives now, like, mm -hmm. oh, now we are trying to reorganize alternatives. Mm -hmm. What happened during the previous load shedding periods? Why did they not come up with alternatives? Because is, so when is, Zesco, the previous one, when is Zesco a, a changing mm -hmm. entity like the government? I mean, does, does Zesco's uh, dealings change with the government changing? Well, or, we can say that. That's why the... Uh, their team, even at uh, uh, directorship level, it changes. I don't In think. Fact, mostly I, I they don't think change that, managers. I don't think that should be the case. If, anyway, it, it is the case. It shouldn't be the case. Mm. Yeah, I think it shouldn't be the case. Actually. Uh, in the Patriotic Front Manifesto. How do you run a business like that? Yeah, but go, go on. In a PF Manifesto, mm. they actually stated that you can't work for, you can't be on the board of a parastato, or simply saying you can't work for a parastato if you are not aligning. With the guy with the patriotic front, ah, oh, explains yeah. the whole yeah, junkie cops, yeah, somewhat, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but maybe it explains the changes at uh, 
at Zesco that happen every time. Yeah. So it means that the new people come with their own things. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's crazy. So anyway, he did give some 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 good levels of clarity. I don't know. Tell me what you think anyway about his speech generally. What mm. did you get mm. from Okay, so from, maybe from what I should get and, is that he yeah. came out uh, sort of clean like he he came out and said the truth. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like he, he said the truth. What part struck good. you the most about the I think he, so, it, mm. it, it's good he was honest that we'll have mm. power uh, outages for the whole year. Mm. Uh, that was the question I was trying to raise the other day mm. that Maybe even it's, beyond, it's bet, because yeah. just from what you read, it says if if we, we have, have uh-huh. yeah, yeah, uh-huh. that's that's important to note. Yeah. That also should indirectly tell us that if the rain is bad, mm-hmm. the rain patterns are bad. The next mm-hmm. season, the load shedding could become worse. Mm-hmm. Um, at the rate we are going, if it does not rain mm-hmm. or we have as much rain as we had this past season, mm-hmm. we might be looking at sixteen hours of load shedding. We might be looking at no power. Yeah. They might start telling us to buy generators because they might not be able to produce power at all. And they are already telling us to do that. (laughs) Since all the power that Zesco will be able to produce will be for other countries (laughs) because they are priority. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, you asked me about uh, the things that they said. So first of all, I think something important that I noted is that uh, we, because, you know, it's, there's been sort of a gray area. People are asking themselves, are we really still exporting with this crisis? Yeah. Yes, we are exporting. Yeah. That's because why I say of, there are other countries are a priority. Exactly. If we good. ever reached yes. a level where you reminded three me. years go mm. by with no rain, trust me, mm. other power, other countries will mm. be powered by Zambia, while Zambians will be so. in the dark. <laughs> I don't think so. At this rate. I don't think so. Unless there's a miraculous we'll, change. <laughs> we might have to... Uh, review all those. Why can't they do it now? They are reviewing the bilateral agreements, yeah. but we might need to review them further. Like now we can't give Like it. just switch it off. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, we can't say it's okay. It's justifiable that it's still happening. Yeah. We can't say that with our foresight, it was justifiable that we, we set up those things. But you know, they say that because we are producing more than we needed mm. at some points and we've got that capacity to produce more than we need. Yeah. So uh, probably it's justified that we decided that we'd be exporting power. Now, I don't think, I think that going forward, when we're signing those bilateral agreements, we should have clauses while we say this, uh, we are we are supplying to you, we have a surplus. This is coming from hydroelectricity. Which hydroelectricity can be affected by the weather? So if we have this kind of problem and we cannot see cutter for our own people adequately, we'll have to cut down on this. And we sign, all of us agree to say, okay, if this happens, then it happens. Yeah. Yeah. So, and also, the, because he was asked, why did we jump to eight hours? Straight. So, yes. So he said, and so he said a few things. By the way, he also mentioned uh, the, the allocation by the Zambezi River Authority uh, of the water. Uh, he mentioned uh, in the past what we've had, and uh, you can imagine we've had like in the past, I think we had 13 uh, billion cubic meters, mm. but uh, cubic, is it cubic liters? Ka? Cubic meters. Ka, ka, this time we've got 8 billion. Yeah. So you can notice the difference there. Five. And then, yes. Yeah. And also when we have, when we had the 13, that was also low compared to the other one, the previous one. I think we had like 22. I mm. think you can have about 22.5. Now, what happened is that after we had these issues, so these these guys knew about this problem a long time ago, yeah. by the way. Okay. That's something that we should, uh, it's a misconception that Zesco, why didn't they know about, the, they, they heard about the El Nino. Why didn't they know the actual severity? So the truth is that they knew about the severity starting from the Zambezi River Authority. Okay. That's why even in the previous year, we allocated 13 cubic uh, meters, but then there was, there's a uh, cafe lower which does about 750 megawatts. They are saying that now it cannot do that as well because, because you know, Kafir Gorge Lower uh, uses water from the, the upper thing. So if we don't have much water in the upper thing, it means even at Kafir Lower, yeah. be, it won't be operating to full capacity. Mm. Yeah, so they asked him, why didn't you jump to eight? Why did you jump straight to eight hours? So his analogy made an explanation of, you have a bag of milk mm-hmm. and then uh, you know that, eh? With the money that you are making, you cannot afford another bag of milimio until the end of the month. So what you need to do is that 25 kg, you need to each the divide more 30 days mm-hmm. in equal portions. Yeah. So that each day you have the same portion of milimio. Because if you say that you load shedding will be for four hours, 
it's the same as eh, you are getting two of those portions that you are supposed to have per day for Shima and making them uh, you have Shima for one day. It means that eh, at the end of the day you find that per 15 Ungawan was it. Mm-hmm. That was his explanation. Yeah. Yeah. So there was some clarity, of course. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think that explanation does make sense. Mm. Um it just makes me wonder mm. if we needed to do that to spread eight hours across the year. Why didn't they just give us six months of mm. so much power mm. that they plan for the other six months with solar? No, because they <laughs> 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 yeah, we are producing power daily, so yeah. that wouldn't wait. <laughs> no, it's I know it's <laughs> okay. It's just trying to find somewhere. Yeah, sorry for talking too much. Did I? <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah so uh, that's that's about load shedding. Um, nothing good. So far, I guess everything is a promise of something worse, mm. unless <laughs> the mm. Lord looks favorably unless upon us. If. Unless if, uh, hey, unless <laughs> if else, <laughs> the Lord looks favorably favorably upon us, and yeah. we have abundant rains starting in June. Mm. Otherwise, tef, tefinto. It's not his. Sivinto. Yep. So, uh, cost of living. Ever rising, the Jesuit Center for Theological Reflection once again uh, has given us a report. Um, the observation is that an increase in the basic needs and nutrition basket, which now stands at 10,603.40 for the month of March, representing a 2.9 increase in comparison to the month of February. The increase in the basket was due to an increase in the prices of some food items, such as a 25 kg bag of roller mill meal, which costs uh, 284 kwacha from 226 kwacha, and fruits such as oranges and apples, which stood at 43.22 from 27.21 per kg. Despite the increase in the overall basket, it was also observed that the price of 40 kgs of vegetables reduced from 571.43 to 689.97. It is worth noting that these changes reflect a combination of factors driving up the cost of living, including the impacts of El Nino induced weather patterns on agricultural production, exchange rate depreciation affecting the cost of imported goods, fluctuating fuel prices, and other interconnected economic dynamics. Yeah, there was some complicated English there. Uh, <laughs> these guys actually do know how to punctuate their stuff. They do? Uh, uh, yeah, fairly, fairly. And they, mm. I like the usage of their words also. Yeah. It seems I like- I think JCTR is very reliable. That's yeah. why I think that uh, the, the the cost of living, their, their bulletin, their bulletins, they are, they are reflective of what's really happening. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. I like the word you used there. Ah, Mr. Chofaya's, uh uh, vocabulary. Ever since I joined the show, it's. it's I know, I know. It's effects going, it's effects going, of it's, hanging out. <laughs> <laughs> My vocabulary levels are going up, like the cost of living. <laughs> but understand that uh, birds of the same feather <laughs> flock together. Uh huh. <laughs> so, what are you saying about yourself? Uh, I distribute oh. vocabulary. You feel like you are there. To the masses. You feel like you are no, there. No, no, I don't feel I am. <laughs> <laughs> In fact, now oh. <laughs> yeah. I'm uh-huh. <laughs> 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 yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh, yeah. What a time to be alive. If you're yeah. not subscribed, please do subscribe, hit that bell and share. We know you love the show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh, cost of living has increased. I don't know if we should say much because we know you guys are feeling it. Uh, prices of everything except some selected vegetables have gone up. Mm. And uh, even the JCTR are shocked by why it's a phenomena. It's, it's a shock. It's mm. something worth studying that these five vegetables have decided to go down <laughs> in, in the midst of such an economy. Yeah, yeah but it's a very interesting thing. It, very interesting. We really need to do some research into this. Where is Al Jazeera when we need them? Which Al Jazeera? To do investigations. They only want to do investigations when 
The West Diamond Media when we need them. I know. Anyway, that... I know why you mentioned that. Yeah, you, you, <laughs> I'm not going there. I was pushing it. <laughs> I was pushing it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was pushing it. <laughs> West Diamond when we need them. Oh, Amazing Minds is here. <laughs> Of course. Amazing Minds is here. Just wait for us to do the research, huh? Uh, next show, we'll go party with Nakuru party. And if you want to continue seeing such, subscribe button up beside you, the notification bell. Then she are doing justice. Uh-huh. <laughs> Actually, coming to think of it, yeah. we should go and see Vanakuru. Yes, we should. Give her a microphone. Mm-hmm. Ask her, can you give us your hypothesis on these vegetable issues? Mm-hmm. Yeah, anyway, uh, <laughs> moving on. We, I don't think we have much, unless you, you would like to. No, 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 no. Everything is clear for people to see, as you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, in some more interesting, I guess on a good note, uh, mm-hmm. President Hichilema and his government have secured, finally, the uh, the debt restructuring deal. The Zambia External Bondholder Steering Committee has announced a significant breakthrough in negotiations with the government of Zambia regarding the restructuring of euro bonds. The agreement termed the 2024 agreement encompassed the restructuring of three major euro bonds totaling over 3.5 billion US dollars. This development marks the accumulation of sustained efforts following the rejection of the previous agreement in principle in November 2023 by the Office Official Creditor Committee, OCC. Since then, the committee has collaborated closely with the government to achieve a reconstructing agreement. No, 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 no. A restructuring agreement. That al- <laughs> Where did I get that? <laughs> that aligns with its standards of comparability of treatment and the IMF's program parameters under the second review framework. In a statement issued today, it states that the 2024 agreement builds upon the foundation of November 2023 agreement, albeit the necessary adjustments to address the evolving circumstances. Notably, the terms provided for additional debt relief beyond the initial agreement, aiming to resolve the standing default on the euro bonds while supporting Zambia's microeconomic and debt sustainability objectives under the IMF financed program. The bond offer the bonds offer future debt relief contingent on Zambia's economic progress, ensuring a dynamic response to the country's evolving financial landscape. And a spokesperson expressed optimism regarding the agreement's potential to restore full international capital market access to Zambia and catalyze long-term investments in the country. We are pleased to have finally reached a definitive and conclusive agreement with the government that is, supposed, that is supported by all stakeholders, which will in due course restore full international capital markets access to Zambia and encourage long-term investment in the country. To the benefit of all Zambians, the spokesperson said, the committee urged Eurobond holders to carefully evaluate the terms of the prospective offer and make informed decisions regarding participation. That was a long read. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That was yeah. a long read. Mm. That was a long read. It was. I think debt restructuring is, um, what words can I best use? Mm. A hope for a better future. Well, <clears throat> what are you basing that on? If you have a child that's due to go to university, in the words of Never Smomba, I'm... Um, Loosely quoting Dr. Nevasman. I hope you don't want to say what I'm thinking. Please, yeah. carry on. Yeah, you have a child going to university mm. uh, or due to go to university, but your debtors are on your neck mm-hmm. because you're owing too much money. Mm-hmm. You have money that could take your child to school, mm-hmm. except uh, you have too much debtors mm-hmm. and they are right at your door. So you structure an agreement with them to say, Instead of me paying you all the money the way you wanted it, Mm -hmm. let me give it to you in bits and pieces Mm -hmm. in order to give me breathing space to at least take my child to school. Mm -hmm. What then that does for me in the future Mm -hmm. is that it reinforces me Mm -hmm. by giving me someone else who's capable. Mm -hmm. So together, me and my child will combine our efforts to pay you back. Mm -hmm. Is that a general view of uh, owing? Because of course, it doesn't make sense to do that. It doesn't <laughs> to lump such a debt on your child. No, <laughs> your no child. you're not lumping the mm. debt on your child. Mm-hmm. You're giving your child capacity. You kill your child's capacity if you pay the debt now. 
no, listen, you are you don't know what your child will become. Heck, you don't even know if your child will be alive by then. How many parents have raised their child on the principle of wonder of saying, ah, well, maybe he'll be a skilled footballer at Rome Twerku School? How many people have lived on the principle of getting debt, thinking that eh, they will use it to educate their children so that their children are the ones to pay back? Almost like half of Unza. Half of Unza, that is not their parents doing that. No, it's not, but the government is like a parent of some sort. <laughs> I don't I don't I don't agree with that. You don't think so? <laughs> no. Okay, so speaking of analogies, yeah. there's an analogy I saw uh for a lady. So she was speaking about uh debt restructuring is so you are going, you drink at a local bar and then one more mobile on credit. Mm-hmm. And then you were on a credit you to pile up. And then the person, the owner of the bar comes to you and say, ah, this credit has piled up. We need our money. Yeah. And then since you don't have the money, you sit down with that person and say that, okay, uh, give me more time mm-hmm. to pay back this debt. Yeah. And then you extend it and expect that your children are the ones, I wish that I could read the thing. It's from a lady, actually. And yeah. you expect that your children are the ones who are going to pay that debt. I mean, one way or more. Yeah. Yeah. So don't limit it to to I mean, what kind of window school. Well, let's let's think of then, it. Let, let's think of it this way also. Uh-huh. Anyway, finish, finish it. Then yeah. After our Congola date, you the guy is happy to say because you've made an extended period, and then you've also made because <laughs> there are a lot of intricacies in this. Yeah. There's also the fact that depending on how our economy is performing, we might need to pay more, right? Mm. So you agree that you actually pay more of this money, but your children are the ones who will pay. So mm-hmm. the barman is happy mm-hmm. that they are going to make more money. So, mm-hmm. because let's not forget that <laughs> we're on an IMF program, yeah. which means we're going to receive money from the IMF, yeah. which is still in Congo. Mm-hmm. And also let's not forget that we're still going to pay this money, mm-hmm. except we have been given breathing room. Yeah, yeah. Of course, for the proponents of the of the debt restructuring, I would uh, say they are justified by saying that uh, we want more headroom so that uh, during this time we can make our money. I think that argument would be more valid if we were still mm. under the PF, uh, given that the PF are the ones who brought us into this level of debt. Mm. Uh, so, if another government comes in to get a debt restructuring deal, mm-hmm. then they can't be the ones blamed as the parent who went to get alcohol. But they're the ones who are doing the restructuring. Yes, they're mm. trying to sort out a problem they didn't cause. But by causing another problem? I don't think there's a problem being caused by the restructuring. No, I, I was telling you that the, the people who are, who are opposing to this idea, mm. this is what they are saying. Yeah, what they are saying is mm. they are addressing the how the problem was caused. They're and saying, also, no, after you drank. <laughs> no, because also in yeah. the solution, you are going back to the same person. And also not only that, you're going to drink more. Yeah, but... And not only but, that, you're going to make your children do, pay that money. Do you think it is better, Zambia would have been better off without the debt restructuring deal? Uh, so I wouldn't say that right now because, I mean, this is a complex issue. I yeah. expect that... Uh, From a layman's point of view, because... Obviously, we mm. could get into technical issues, which From by the, which by the way view. we might get into, we, we will get into uh, next week. We'll give you a further breakdown of just exactly what the debt restructuring means. But from a layman's point of view. From a layman's point of view, I think that it depends on how we go about this going forward. Uh, the results will depend on what happens going forward. Because the fact is that we're still going to incur more debt. Yeah. The fact is that we're still going to pay. Yeah, the fact yeah. is still we're still going to pay, but we're not going to pay in as strenuous way as we would have before. Let's give an example, mm. or let's say, for instance, the debt restructuring did not exist mm. at all, mm. and we still needed to pay the debt as much as we needed to pay it. Mm-hmm. That means the situation we're seeing economically now would have been far much worse, mm. so much so that it would have destroyed certain aspects of our economy permanently. Mm. But in order to revive... You mean going de- forward? Yes. If we had no debt restructuring deal, mm-hmm. from a layman's point of view, mm. if I spoke of it from a layman's point of view, mm. we would have been talking about paying through our teeth, would have been talking about completely destroying certain aspects of our economy permanently, mm-hmm. uh, almost irrevivable. So Zambia would have begun to eat their own children. <laughs> <laughs> That's a stretch. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm telling you, what else could we have done? Yeah, I so mean, anyways, Z- I, I, Zambia I, I, seems, right now, we seem very powerless mm. to our own 
to the elements. For example, if there is no rain, mm. we are not going to have electricity. We are vulnerable to the elements of the earth. Mm. What more the elements of human beings mm. who we owe money? So first of all, this uh, restructuring that we've done, yeah. if we mess this up and start defaulting again, mm. the consequences are dire. Yeah. That's one. Second, as I've already mentioned, it does not mean that we've stopped incurring debt. Yes. We will still be doing that. Yeah. So, uh, I'm, I'm speaking, you see, I'm, I'm a layman, but also I'm getting views from a lot of people. I'm getting views from the proponents. I'm getting views from the people who are opposing this. Yeah. So, for the people that are proposing it, which, and I'm, I'm getting these things because there are things that we cannot see. So, of course, there will be improvement when it comes to Zambia accessing the capital markets internationally. Yeah. There will be improvements in um, uh, foreign direct investment. Mm. Because people now will have more, uh, because we're on an AMF deal, people will be more comfortable to do business in Zambia. Yeah. Because before that, probably they, would think, they were thinking, this country is debt ridden and something is about to break. Yeah. So we can't go and do business Which it, it was. It was about to break? <laughs> the Caribbean. Yeah, go on. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't they find a crack on it? You know, that's, yeah. a, that's a bad joke. Yeah, go on. <laughs> go on. <laughs> yeah, so uh, that is a good plus also. Uh, if you have enough room, uh, you can actually work something out to make sure that, eh? like for instance, you're a business. Yeah. If you have got more room to pay your debt, mm. you might make more money in your business and pay that debt comfortably more than you would before. Yeah, which is exactly what I was trying to say. I, I, really, I, so, I really appreciate the idea uh -huh. of creating a powerhouse yes. where individuals come together mm -hmm. to become one individual yeah, so and the capacity what they're able to do as one mm. is far much greater mm. if our future generations mm. who is the one in this case the future generations mm -hmm. if our future generations are preserved economically and empowered not just preserved but empowered mm -hmm. because here's the thing empowered to prepare them to pay for the debts right Yes, um, you know, there's a, a part I would like you to look, focus on, to narrow in on. Mm -hmm. It's like people who look at someone who inherited wealth mm -hmm. and they say it's just an inheritance. There's work that goes into maintaining it. And part of the work that goes into maintaining it is educating that child, making him capable mm -hmm. of maintaining the wealth mm -hmm. and possibly growing the wealth. Mm -hmm. And of course, a business that's inherited will be inherited with debt. Mm -hmm. But you can't say, ah, you've taken, you've given your child the debt. No, that's why you empowered him. Mm. As opposed, or her. yeah, or her, mm. as opposed to that child who was not empowered and they have to start from scratch. They have to learn how to build connections afresh. They have to learn what this is and what that is. It will take them a longer period of time to build capacity. Some of whom will never build that capacity. Mm. And so if any form of wealth is left in their hands, mm. they will destroy it. So what kind of a generation are we trying to build given the situation we have now? The, the problem I have with people who are opposing it, giving those points mm. is that they are not looking at, okay, what do we presently have? We have debt. Mm. Is it better we don't have a debt restructuring deal? What is the best alternative? Yeah. yeah, by the way, you know, a lot of politicians are opposing this. And fun fact, those same politicians were going this same route, but they failed. Yeah. So it's not like they would have done things different. Yeah. Yeah. They would yeah. have probably done it worse. Yeah. Yeah. Because, you know, we've had a deadlock. There's, there's been a lot of issues. There are some, if you remember very well, there's, because also we should agree that this deal is uh, an agreement in principle. Mm. So it's not like uh, this is done and dusted. Mm. And also I'm not even happy that the president can post on its page, on his page that it's done. So this is not done and dusted. I, I don't think this is a, an agreement in principle. I think it is an agreement in principle. So it is not done and dusted. Mm. So there's still, in fact, you know, I don't think it's an agreement in principle. Mm. It says the definitive agreement. No, because you know, uh, this is this is more and conclusive agreement. This is more Yeah. Yeah. Ah, I see. So this is an agreement in principle. If you read the agreement, you know that this is an agreement in principle. Mm, okay. Yeah. So and also uh, looking at the one of the advantages, I mentioned the other thing, like you've got more headroom and blah blah blah. Mm. So there's also the haircut. What they call the haircut. Mm. So about 800 million has been forgiven. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but also not forgetting that if our economy does better, we'll pay more. So yeah, I don't know how that works together. But the fact that some money has been forgiven 
800 billion. Mm. It's a good no, thing. No, it gives the country capacity 800 to 800 million. Did I say 800 billion? No. You said million. million. You said million, yeah. Okay. It yeah, yeah. That, that would be way more than uh, <laughs> than we owe, yeah. Yeah, of course. It, uh, and also, we should also note that uh, this is not everything that Zambia owes, mm, right? Mm. It's not it's not everything that uh, falls under this agreement. Mm. Because there's also the money that the government owes local people. Mm. So that one is still intact. Yeah, no, but and those, are, those are amounts that would definitely be easier to pay. No. And we've also got, because our our our, total, you, you, you our debt me. right now yeah. is north of $20 billion. This is less than $4 billion that we're talking about. I stand corrected. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Anyway, let's. So let's, anyway, it's it's good that you said that we might have an expert, and then we break this down mm. because there are a lot of events. I, I that did not say happened. that part on the show, but yeah. <laughs> oh, it did me in the background. Yeah, yeah, because you know there are a lot of things that have happened uh, since uh, 2019. Mm. Yeah, there was actually a default on a bullet payment of these euro bonds. I don't know if you know about mm. that. Yeah. Okay. Um, anyway, let's so, get into those details. Uh, yeah. Uh, next week, okay. the, the 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 meat of it. Um, sorry, finish that point. So there's, uh, there's, I've uh, even forgotten what I did say. <laughs> but anyway, yeah. uh, so uh, uh, the most important point that I wanted to say mm-hmm. is that I think it's last year, Kuma last, mm-hmm. we had this issue of uh, the president that secured the uh, debt restructuring. Yeah. And we even saw people going to the airport to welcome, to welcome the president. Did you see that? Yes, 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 yes. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But after that, that's why I was emphasizing that this is an agreement in principle. Mm. Because after that, a part of, because we owe a lot of people. There are bilateral, uh, there's a there's bilateral debt. We owe private lenders. Mm. Uh, we owe this uh, this thing that we call euro bond, uh, dollar denominated, not, eh? dollar denominated, whatever. So there are a lot of parties that we yeah. owe. And most interestingly, some of these parties do not see eye to eye. Yeah. So that's why there was a deadlock in the first place because you owe some Americans, you owe Chinese, and then eh, Americans eh, a favorable, favorable conditions to them. Ah. And then Kuma Chinese, eh, less favorable. Mm. So that's why we also had all these people to sit down. And by the way, they are saying that this is more like a test program. Zambia is like a guinea pig. Yeah. They are testing this eh, on eh, uh, these low income, the poor countries, so yeah. to say, the highly indebted countries. So they are testing this after COVID. I don't because think also much, Zambia was I the don't first. Think we have much of a choice. Zambia was the first COVID era country to default on their loan. Yeah, I don't think we have much of a choice, uh, given how we have mishandled our own economy. But let us see what we can give you next week yes. in terms of the, the meat yeah. of, of yeah so of to me i think the most important thing is what we do going forward yeah, yeah. i think i think so too yeah. uh much to mr chofaya's delight <laughs> hero stadium finally they finally closed the cholera center i know you are happy about this i am happy too <laughs> but there's something i'm not happy about what are you not happy about uh, let's go i know i know i know i know i know yeah so uh Minister of Health, Sylvia Masewo, uh, gives her remarks. The 39 new cases, the highest is on the Copper Belt, with 23 new cases reported only from the Copper Belt. And then, of course, Isaka province, Lebanon, Central Four, Northwestern One, the rest of the country is 000. So basically, it remains with Lusaka and the copper belt, but you've seen Lusaka is 11, copper belt is 22. The numbers are very low, but there are still cholera cases. These are cholera cases. And we are continuing with making sure that we maintain the numbers to be low and hope to get to zero throughout the country. So, as you are saying, this is delighting. This is happy. Yeah. Delighting. Delightful. Delightful. Nchokondwele is a maningi. Aha. Uti, i fezi ya kolera, tafika pa stage hapa, because, ngati tavara hero stage ya kolera center. And she, man, if you know what And she also mentioned that we've had zero deaths mm. for like two weeks, I think, if I'm not mistaken. Mm. Yeah. So, we're heading somewhere. We hope that we don't drop our guard. I still insist that we're in this position because of the vaccine. Yeah. So there's no need to drop our guard. There is no need for the government not to do what they told us to sort this out permanently. Mm. The shallow wells, the unplanned settlements, it's hard. It's expensive. Mm. I hope that the government do it. 
Yeah, so that's what I got to say about yeah, this. Yeah, we surely do hope that the government does um, uh, follow, does follow up, follow up. <laughs> follow up there's, a particular, there's a particular word. You know, today my vocabulary is just like they are. Like I'm, trying to, yeah, like I'm trying to reach out for the words, you know. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, yeah, so uh, we are happy about we're happy about the developments uh, with regards to cholera. And before we end the show today, or in ending the show today, we'll leave you with a few words from Mr. Msokotwane. See you next week. This is why I say that it's important for the people of Zambia to examine those who say they want to come back, to come and do what? To close the new mines that we're opening and to borrow new money on top of the one that we are canceling now. So to the people of Zambia, I'll say, please don't. Hey, like what you see? I know you do. Hit the button below to subscribe and don't forget to hit the notification bell. Ciao.